Praise the Lord to everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight to the Midweek Connect here at A Better Light Ministry. I'm so glad that you, you, and you have joined in on tonight to what we call the Midweek Connect. Tonight we're favored and we're blessed to be ministered to by the word of the Lord, my bishop and my pastor. He preached a message to his congregation probably now about two weeks ago. And uh, I said, Bishop, you've got to send that message over to us. And I want to say to every tither, every tither, this word will bless you on tonight. If I could phrase it as such, this is one of those bonus messages for all tithers. And even those of you who may not have been consistent this word, this teaching, this instruction through the word of the Lord will stimulate, motivate, and inspire you to be properly aligned in the way of giving, the way of tithing, and honoring the Lord with your tithe. So I want for you to sit attentively with open ears to receive the word of the Lord as it is ministered to us tonight by my pastor and bishop, Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark of the Body of Christ Assembly in Cleveland, Ohio. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Be blessed. I'll be back. Malachi, the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse number 7. <clears throat> Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse. I don't like that. Man, I don't like to read that in the scriptures. He said, You are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even the whole nation. Then he says, Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, If I will not open you the window of heaven windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field saith the lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land saith the Lord of hosts. Let the people say amen. I want to magnify. Go back with me to verse 10. Bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house, that there, be, that there may be meat in my house. For our subject matter, meat in my house. Meat in my house. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Bless the word as we minister life, life to the people of God on this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we started in a week ago talking about the power to bless. And I have not been able to let this go. I'm telling you, everyone does not have the power to bless you. Amen. You've got to put yourself in a position to be blessed. The one that blesses you is somebody that you submit to. The one that blesses you is somebody that you honor. The one that blesses you is somebody that you see better than you, greater than you. You got to put yourself in that position. And then there are those that God blesses to be a blessing. He anoints you. He empowers you to bless others. There are many people who have been frustrated because you want to bless your kids, but they hard head hard-headed. Hey, they, they want to do what they want to do. You want to bless your kids, but they won't listen. You want to bless your kids, but they think they know everything. See, they're not in a position to be blessed. And the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow. When you give, 
The Lord said, I'll give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I will cause men to bless you. So yes, the Lord does anoint people to bless you, but the people, amen, that are being blessed must be in the posture to be blessed. And so that message is just, oh my God, it's just been stirring in me, blessing. I want to bless. And on last Sunday, we began to speak the blessing over the people of God. I told them I'm blessing the tithers. I'm blessing the tithers. And that was, that just, I'm, I'm blessing the tithers. And it just kept me reading and kept me studying passages that I have read over and over and over again. And so on Wednesday night, we picked it up and we began to talk about um, return, restore, and rebuke. Oh man, we went through the scriptures there, this same passage in Malachi, and uh, we took a walk through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through it just a little bit, but the essence of this message, return, uh, restore, and rebuke, was when we get to the book of Malachi, God's people are in a backslidden condition. They have gone their own way and they're doing their own thing. And God began to deal with them. Uh, if you look at uh, Malachi chapter 1, he begins to declare his love to them in Malachi chapter 1. In verse number 8, he begins to indict an um, ungodly priesthood. They were unfaithful. Uh, they were polluting the uh, offering with um, lame sacrifices. The animals that they were presenting to the Lord was me it was a mess. They were not coming up to the standard that God had suggested for them. And if you continue reading in Malachi chapter 2, he says he was going to judge them. Why? Because they're the priests. Their mouths were not filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They were not teaching and preaching the word of God. They had divorced their, the wives of their youth and married these other ungodly women. And these ungodly women were idol worshipers. I mean, he let them have it. The book, book of Malachi, he straightens out the leadership or the priesthood. He begins to say to the people of God, I'm going to purify the sons of Levi. I'm going to get the house of God right. So he starts out in Malachi chapter 3, as we just read on uh, this morning, return to me, come to me. He said, you, you, haven't been, you haven't been walking right before me. And Wednesday night, we began to, amen, appeal to the people of God to return to the Lord. Just in case you've fallen away, return to the Lord. Come back to him. And then they said, okay, we're guilty and we want to get right. How do we get right? Then he says, by being restored. So return, restore. What do we restore? Restore the tithe. He said, bring back the tithe. Now, if you read the book of Malachi, those priests were commanded to divorce those ungodly women and return to their wives. But the commandment of the nation was to return to the Lord through the tithe and offering. He said, you all have been robbing me. You've been robbing me. You, you haven't honored me. And that's why I can't bless you because the priest have gone profane, but the other thing that has happened to the priest but the, is that the priest have gone out of the temple and they're laboring in the field. He said, you got to get them out of the field and bring them into the house of God and pay the tithe. Pay the tithe. And then the Lord says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. Now that was powerful for us on Wednesday night. Because for years, we were under the notion that the, the devourer was the devil. And, and we read the book of uh, Joel. Where is that passage at? I want to find that passage. Joel chapter 2. Uh, go down to that Joel chapter 2 verse 23. He says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause uh, to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I, rest I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now that's what's powerful. He says... Uh, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. The devourer, the, the, the locust, the caterpillar, the cankerworm, palmer worm. He said, I sent them among you. 
A lot of times people have disobeyed God. They won't honor the Lord with the tithe. And the Lord causes their, their, their harvest to be eaten up. They get money, but it don't last. It's not enough. They get a promotion, and it don't look like they got a promotion. They get extra money, a new stream of income. They're working harder, 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 and more longer hours, but they're not getting ahead. It says it like this in Haggai. Look at Haggai chapter 1, verse number 4. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have so much and bring in little. You keep working real hard, but you're not bringing in nothing. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in it into bags with holes. Oh, my God. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. In other words, restore the house of God and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much and lo, it came to little and when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man into his own house. Everybody taking care of their house, but they won't take care of my house. He said in verse 10, therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon the labor of the hands. My God, the Lord says, because they were not honoring me with the time, and they went a-whoring after other gods, they're making money, but it's not enough. They're putting their money in bags with holes in it. They get clothes, but they're not warm. Everything they get, the blessing gets turned into a curse. Ooh, I love that. So when you look at Malachi, he's dealing with the priest. But when you look at um, Haggai and Joel, he's talking to the people. Never forget, like priest, like people. So the Lord wanted to straighten out the priest first so that the people would be straightened out. And what the people were doing was they was ordering everything from Amazon for their house. They was decorating their house. They was getting everything for their house, but they didn't have no tithe for the house of God. They was going here and there and traveling and buying and selling, and, 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 but they didn't take care of the house of God. And the Lord says, I, I'm not down with that. Y'all living in y'all nice houses, but my house lies waste. He said, as a result of that, the, the canker worm, the palm worm, the locust, and the caterpillar, they're going to eat your stuff up. You're going to put your money in bags with holes in it. You're going to get clothes, but they're not going to wear nice. You're going you're gonna to work real hard, but you're not going to have enough. Why? Because you're fighting against God. I remember years ago, y'all remember that play, Your Arms Are Too Short to box with God. You need to honor the Lord. So the Lord began to call his people back. He said, restore the tithe and I will rebuke the devourer. I'm going to get that thing off of you. What is it? Curse. Verse 9 there in Malachi 3. He said, you're cursed with a curse. Wow. The very thing that should be blessing you is cursing you. Like it did with in, in uh, Acts chapter 5 with Ananias and Sapphira. They had an offering. And the very thing that was supposed to bless them killed them. It cursed them. Why? Because they didn't honor God. And I'm telling you, that message on Wednesday night was super fire. Amen. That is, God calls us to return to him. And then he said, restore, get restored by paying the tithe. Bring the tithe to the house of God. And finally, as a result of you, amen, paying your tithe, I am going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Ooh, that word set me on fire. And I kept on digging. I kept on digging. And there's more to the text. I want to open up more. Go back to Malachi chapter 3. L look at what he says here. Verse number 9. Ye are cursed with the curse. For ye have robbed me. Malachi 3 and 9. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye are ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. He says, bring ye all the tithes into, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. That was intriguing to me. What are you saying about that, Lord? You bring the tithe so there could be meat 
in my house. And prove me, now here will say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. All this, all this waste that you're going through, God said, well, stop that. Your, your money keep getting ate up, I'm going to stop that. You keep having unexpected bills and unexpected runovers and costs, and God said, I'm going to stop that. He says, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord. That meant when it was time to harvest and um, some of the fruit would fall to the ground and uh, the worms would eat it up, the bugs would eat it up. Not only that, but it would become rotten and not good to be consumed. And so uh, they, they would plant the seed, the harvest would grow, but the, but the fruit would, would fall before you harvest it. It would fall unripe and it would fall and be polluted and become no good, unuseful. A lot of work without no benefit. I'm telling you, people of God, I see exactly what the Lord is saying. If you have been one of those people that has been spinning your wheels in the mud, you're doing a whole lot, but you're not getting uh, ahead, make sure you honor the Lord with your tithe. Return to the Lord and restore the Lord's tithe. And then, amen, God's going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. But I want to open up something very powerful on uh, this morning, and that is meat in God's house. Is there meat in God's house? Now, when we look at the word of God and we begin to study concerning the tithe, I'm going to give you a couple of foundational scriptures. I gave them to you last week, but I'm going to go back through them and show you that the tithe belongs in the house of God. I'm finding out, I just talk to people and I'm finding out, you know, people feel like uh, they have tithe when they take um, this money and they buy a Bible. They feel like they tithe or they, they take this money and they do something. Um, they, they buy a church robe. Uh, they pay for a conference or uh, uh, no, no, no. The Bible says you bring the tithe to the house of God because it has a specific use. Now, last week, our focus was on restoring the tithe. But this week, I want to talk about what is the purpose of the tithe. Now, when you do an in-depth study, amen, the tithe was to be brought into the house of God. That's very key, that it was to be put in the hands of the priest. That's very key. There was um, uh, uh, ministry for the widow. There was ministry for the fatherless, amen, to God, for uh, and the stranger to be done with the tithe. There was some community ministry to be done with the tithe. But the lion's share of the tithe was to sustain the priest. That's very key that you understand that the tithe, the purpose of the tithe was to sustain the priest, not the house, but the priest. And the reason I say that is because the house of God was to be built and paid for. I'm telling you, sometimes saints of God, we have just been out of whack. We've been out of, um, we haven't got the order right. But as God gives us light, we need to walk in that light. That is, when you check the record in the days of Moses, they received an offering and they, were, they paid for the house of God. We're doing all kinds of financial stuff and paying mortgages and whatnot, but the house of God could not be dedicated, amen, having a mortgage. The house of God could not be dedicated unto, how could it be given wholly to the Lord when the bank owns the property? So in the days of Moses, when you study the scripture, when you built the house of God, you paid for the house of God. So when the tithe came into the house, the tithe didn't go to pay the mortgage. The tithe didn't go um, in our day to pay all of these bills. Mm -mm. The tithe went to sustain the priest. And this is very key, and I'm going to show you why in the Word of God. Take a look with me at Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 27, verse number 3. Let me give you a couple of scriptures that affirm that the tithe was to be brought to the house of God, given to the priest, and that it was for the priest. 
Look with me at Leviticus 27 and 30. It says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, come on verses, come on verses, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And that's Leviticus 27. At least if you can, put those verses up for me so I can see them. Amen. Look at Numbers chapter 3, verse number 12. And behold, I have given or I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. Amen to God. So here, the Levites... The firstborn, amen, were the Lord's. The Levites were the Lord's. Look with me at Deuteronomy 26 and, and 2. It says, Thou shalt take the first of all the first, uh, all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. So he says, bring the first fruits, bring the firstborn, bring the first of the seeds, the first of all the harvest. Look with me at Joshua chapter 6, amen, verse number 18, here's the first city that Israel conquered in the promised land, and ye in any wise... Keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves a curse when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Here, the Bible says, again, bring the tithe, bring the first fruits, bring the firstborn. Bring the first of the seed, the first of the harvest. And even when they got into the promised land, Jericho, he said, don't, don't touch the gold or the silver, the brass. That belongs to me. Underscore that. That belongs to me. We don't touch what belongs to God. Somebody, somebody type that in. I'm going to put you all to work just a little bit this morning. Type it in. We don't touch what belongs to God. That's a very, very significant truth that we never touch what belongs to God. You belong to God. People will do themselves a favor by keeping their mouth off of you, keep their hands off of you, stay out of your business, leave you alone. Why? Because you belong to God. And you're not playing. You have wholly committed your life to the Lord. You've dedicated yourself to God. You're doing your best to please him, to fulfill his will. Amen. To serve your community. You are an ambassador of God. According to the word of God, you're the apple of his eye. You're kings and priests unto the Lord. Amen. You are the offspring of God. You're heirs with Christ and uh, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is your elder brother. You have been adopted into the family of God. We are the people of God, those who have been called by his name. He has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We are a part of the kingdom. We're part of the family. We're part, amen to God, of the inheritance, the heritage of the Lord. We are the apple of his eye, people of God. He has put his grace on you. He's put his anointing on you. He's loved you so much. He's got angels before you and behind you on the right and on the left above and beneath. God is watching over you, loved you so much that he died for you. And I dare anybody bring an accusation against you. Folk can't even talk about you. They can't even talk about, they can't even put their mouth on you. Oh my God, the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you are his peculiar treasure. You are his people. The things that God says are his, you don't touch. Don't touch his man. Don't touch his word. You add anything to his word, you take anything away, your name is blotted out of the book of life, according to the book of Revelation. Don't touch what belongs to God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't touch it. You don't touch it. Amen. Amen. Now, look at, go down with me, amen, to Leviticus chapter 10. We've got to bring the tithe. The tithe is one of those things you don't touch. Right? You don't touch his people, you don't touch his house, you don't touch his word, you don't touch his man, the priest of the Lord. Uh, no, no, and you don't touch the tithe. That belongs to God. We know that Achan, you know, when he, we talked about Jericho, 
They marched around the walls in that city, the spoil, the gold, and the silver of that city. The Lord said, that stuff isn't mine. Don't touch that stuff. That belongs to me. And this guy named Achan, he stole some of that stuff and hid it in his tent. He ended up getting killed, him, his wife, his kids. They took them and put them in the valley of Achor. Read it for yourself in Joshua chapter 7. And they stoned them and then set them on fire because they touched what, what belonged to God. Some may say, man, that was pretty harsh. Oh, that was mean. I'm telling you, that's why I'm here preaching and teaching you. Don't touch what belongs to God. Why? Because it brings a curse on you and your family and your kids. And stuff is not going to go right for you when you touch what belongs to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at what it says here in Leviticus chapter 10, verse number 11. It says, and that ye teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron and to Eliezer and unto Ithamar and the sons, uh, his sons that were left. Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offering of the Lord made by fire and eat it without leaven besides the altar, for it is most holy. It's very key that you understand that God commanded Moses to tell the priest to eat the offering. Verse number 13, and ye shall eat it in the holy place because it is thy due and thy son's due of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire for so I am commanded. Listen, people of God, I've just given you some powerful truth. Now you need to stay with me as I open this up. God tells Moses to tell the Levites, go in, receive the tithe, and eat it. Eat it in the, pre, in the temple. Eat that which is holy. This is sanctified. This is set apart. This is holy. You need to eat that. You need to eat that. The priest, you got to eat it. He said, you and your kids, y'all need to eat it. Consume it. Why? Because it's what's holy, and the priest must eat what is holy? Stay with me. Look at Numbers chapter 18, verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Aaron, thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them, for I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. He said, all right, y'all can't get no houses and land and property that's given. And you know, Joshua, let me go back. Moses brought them out of Egypt. Joshua took them into the promised land. But Joshua's assignment was not only to take them into the promised land, but to divide the land and give each tribe their inheritance. But when it came to the tribe of Levi, they were not given a piece of land. They were not given an inheritance. The Lord says, I am their inheritance. They can't have no possessions. He said, I'm their possession. They can't have property and all this stuff. I, I'm their property. What do they get then? How, what do they get? Because they serve in the temple. They serve the people. They teach them the principles and truths of God. They marry and bury and, and, and heal and speak blessing. What do they get? The Lord said they get the tithe. The tithe belongs to them. It's holy and that's what they're commanded to eat. That's their due. Out of the tithe, out of what's given to the Lord that is holy, they are to have a living. They are to make uh, a living. Look at what it says here in Ezekiel 44. How do the priests make their living? From the tithe, from the free will offering of the people. There had to be meat in the house of God so the priests could eat the meat. Y'all stay with me. I ain't never seen what I'm about to show you. Look at Ezekiel 44, verse 28. And it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance. Again, he bears it out. And ye shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the meat offering. They got to eat the meat that's in the house of God. And the sin offering. And the trespass offering. And every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. And the first of all the first fruits of all things. And every oblation of all of every sort of your oblations shall be the priest 
ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thine house. And the priest shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself or torn, whether it be fowl or beast. My God. Here, Ezekiel just flat out says, is all the priest. Give the, give the offering, give the tithe, it belongs to the priest. Every dedicated thing, every holy thing must be consumed by the priest. Good God Almighty. Some say, well, Bishop, you, you, this is a lot of Old Testament stuff. What is the New? Let me show you what the New Testament says. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, says the Apostle Paul, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the oxen that treadeth out the corn. Doeth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written that he that ploweth should sow in hope and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. If others be partakers of this power over you and um, uh, are not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which dwell or which wait at the door or at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so have the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Now that's very key. Those that preach and minister and labor in the gospel should live of the gospel. I, I want to give you a little bit more. Let's go further down. Let's go further down. I want to show you how Jesus dealt with how you minister to the priest. Uh, return. Okay, I want to come back to God. By restoring the tithe. Okay, I want to give the tithe. But today's lesson is, okay, what, what do we do with the tithe? It belongs to the priest. And the priests are commanded to eat it. Why? Because they are empowered to speak the blessing. And they can't speak the blessing until they eat at the Lord's table. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, lead me beside the still waters. He restored, uh, lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He restored my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What do you do? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There is a table that is set for the man, for the woman of God. There's a table that is set for you. You've got to eat angels' food. You've got to eat that which is offered, offered unto the Lord. There are people, amen to God, you need to understand, amen, what your spiritual appetite is, what your spiritual diet is. You need to understand what you're supposed to be eating. Now, specifically, your man of God, your woman of God, there's some special food. Study Elijah. The three feedings of Elijah. He's fed by the ravens. He's fed, amen, um, by the woman. He's fed by the angel. Um, and he goes in the strength of the meat from the raven. He goes in the strength of uh, what was prepared, uh, the last meal, the last meal, uh, the last meal first. You know, here it is, the Lord sweat, the last shall be first. Uh, the last meal first, here it is, Elijah takes of it first, and then he goes in the strength of that meat. He's even able to raise the dead, and even when he's going through his personal challenges, it is an angel that shows up and feeds him again. You need to understand that the man, the woman of God, has got to eat something that comes from God. He's got to eat something that is holy. He's got to eat something, amen, that is sanctified or something that belongs to God. There is a table prepared for you. My God, my God. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you what Jesus had to say. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Amen. Your blessing was directly tied to your supervising priest eating what is holy. As a result, the Lord empowers the priest to bless and then God opens the windows of heaven. Your blessing, as we study the word of God, Old Testament and New, I'm about to show you what Jesus had to say about it, was directly tied to your supervising priest. 
that the Lord blessed his people, but he did not disconnect that blessing from the care of his priest. You had to honor the man of God. You had to honor the priest. Look at what it says here in Matthew chapter 8, verse number 1. And when he came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. You would think that's it. Verse 3 is over. Nope. Look at verse 4. And Jesus said unto him, See that thou tell no man, but go thy way and show yourself to the priest. Okay, should I just show him? No, don't stop there. And offer the gift that Moses commanded for testimony unto them. Go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift. In Luke chapter 17, you got 10 lepers, 10 lepers. They said, Lord, can you heal us? He heals them. And then again, he tells them, Go show yourself to the priest. Go show. Why? Lord, we're healed. As they went, they were healed. But he said, go show you. Why? Because the blessing of the Lord is not disconnected from your supervising priest. That's Old Testament. That's New Testament. Those are the words of Jesus. Go show yourself to the priest. What? You need a priest to speak a blessing over you. God has empowered people to bless you. Somebody that you can honor. Somebody that you can submit to. Somebody you can sow into. Somebody that you can see is better than you or greater than you, according to the book of Hebrews. That's who can bless you. You need to go back and hear that word again. That's who can bless you. But how are they empowered to bless you? That release, hey, for the 10 lepers, even for the one leper that was healed, he was healed, they were cleansed, but the priest had to bless them to move again in the community. The priest had to open up the way to allow them to be accepted in the, in the community and throughout the city. The priest had a special blessing that came upon them. And Jesus said, now you've been touched by me. Now go, your, go show yourself to the priest. You've been healed by me. Now go show yourself to the priest. Let me tell you something. Uh, I, I, I curse all the priests that try to take Christ's glory. I, I curse all the priests that try to act like they are the ones that heal. They're the ones that deliver. They're the ones that move. No, no, no. That power belongs to God. But they are the supervising priest that releases the blessing of God. And that's how the Lord has ordained it. I'm telling you, saints of God, I see it in a way that I've never seen it before. And I'm not ashamed to teach it to you on today. I understand why I have some of my sons and daughters who are blessed, 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 while others struggle, struggle, struggle. And they all come to the same church. They all listen to the same preacher. They all, amen, have aligned themselves with the church and the body of Christ and this, that, and the other. But you know what? There are some that recognize that I am their supervising priest. And there are some that sow into my life. There are some that are committed and faithful with the tithe and the offering, and they make sure that there is meat in the house of God so the man of God can eat and make a living from that which is holy, from that which is offered unto the Lord. And now I am empowered to bless the people of God. Now I am empowered. That's why your marriage has come through hell and is still standing. That's why you are working jobs that you have not been qualified for. That's why streams of income keep coming. Doors keep opening for you. God is blessing, blessing, blessing. Why? Because you have returned. You have restored and God has rebuked the devourer for your sake. Why? Because you have brought the priest the first of your dough and God has caused me to speak a blessing and that blessing is resting in your house. I'm going to show you. Come on, stay with me. I'm going to open up some things for you today that you have never seen before. My God, I got a few questions for you. What is your man of God eating? How is your man of God eating? Is there meat in God's house? Is there meat in God's house for you? Is there meat? Is there meat in God's house? When you study the scripture, and I have, y'all, you know what? I, I'm so, I, it's like I'm giving a, 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 a collegiate level Bible class today. And, and y'all forgive me for being so weighty, 
But this is the kind of teaching and preaching that I've been longing to do. I've, I've been longing to get out of the daycare in the elementary and begin to get into the meat of the word of God. You know what Jesus said in John chapter 4? He said, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Do you understand that God's priest must eat that which is holy? God's priest must eat that which is sanctified because that is what empowers them. To bless the people. Oh, Rabasha Kadabasa. Let me let me show you like this. Do you understand that the priests represent the people to God? But the people or the priests also represent God to the people. And when the priest represents the people to God, he receives the offering. But when the priest represents God to the people, he consumes the offering. The priest must eat what is sacrificed to the Lord. That's the very thing that empowers him. This is why Jesus Christ could say, I have meat to eat that you know not of. This is why Acts chapter 15, this is, this is eagle's food here. Acts 15, um, when they set ordinances in the church, uh, they told all the Gentiles, just don't eat the meat that's been offered to other gods. Why? Because they understood this principle that your God, amen to God, is served through the offerings. And even the idol gods that tried to mimic the living God, these profane idol worshipers, these heathens, in their worship would offer meat and sacrifice this meat to their God. How did they get it to their God? Their priest consumed it. How does your offering get to God? God can't even receive it unless it's consumed by your priest. I'm, I just let, let that soak in. I know that's eagle's food, and you may have to go back and read all those verses I just gave, and you have to read them in context. Read about 20. You have to read about 20 different passages that have about 30 different verses, and you're going to say, wow, that's exactly what the Word of God says. The Word of God teaches us that the blessing of the Lord comes upon the people as a result of them honoring God. And when they honor God, that tithe, that offering must be given to their supervising priest. Go show yourself to, to the priest and offer that which Moses has commanded. Look with me. Look with me at 2 Chronicles chapter 31. Let's go back. 2 Chronicles 21. Let's look at Hezekiah. You find out that God's people, uh, they had an up and down relationship with God. They were serving God. They were not serving God. They were serving God. They were not serving God. And many times when they were not serving God, it had everything to do with their offering. It had everything to do with their commitment to the tithe and supporting the meat in the house of God. Why? Because it was that support that came to the house that sustained the priest and kept the priest in place to declare the word of the Lord, which kept God's people straight. But when they got out of the pattern of honoring the house for the priest to be taken care of, the priest had to go in the field and work. And there was no word from the Lord. Is there a word from the Lord? That's why when they wanted a word from the Lord, they brought a gift to the prophet. They brought a gift to the preacher. They brought a sacrifice. They gave an offering unto the Lord. Solomon offered the Lord a thousand bullocks. A thousand bullocks. You don't just give them to God. You give them to the priest. And the priests consume them. And then God shows up in a dream and gives this man wisdom beyond what any other man has ever received. Why? Because the Lord has a pattern. The Lord has an order. He says, bring all the tithe into my house that there may be meat in my house. Hey, God don't come down and eat the meat. But he has his priest in position to receive that which is committed to the Lord. And that's when the blessing is released. Oh, I'm on third base now. Look at what Hezekiah said in 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 2. And Hezekiah appointed the courses of the priests and the Levites after their courses 
every man according to his service, the priests and the Levites for burnt offerings and for peace offerings to minister and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of the Lord. And he appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt off. The, hey, the king paid his tithes to wit for the morning and the evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the set feast, as it is written in the law of Mo they brought all their offerings, all their special offerings. They brought their 2020 uh, uh, all in seed. They brought their $500 super seed. They brought their thousand dollar anniversary seed, whatever the seed was and the weekly tithe, the monthly tithe, every gift they brought it and honor the Lord. And he appointed, look at what the Lord says. Verse number four, moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priest and the Levites that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn, wine, oil, honey, and all the increase of the field and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah and uh, that dwelt in the cities of Judah, they also brought in in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God and laid them by heaps. In the third month, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finished them in the seventh month. And when Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people, Israel. And Hezekiah questioned with the priest and the Levites concerning, he said, what's all this extra stuff we got? And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered and said, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat. We have had enough to eat and have left plenty. For the Lord have blessed his people. And that which is left is this great store. I'm telling you, people, God, I keep looking at it, and everywhere I look, I see that the people bring the offering, the tithe to the priest. And the blessing is released when the priest consume it, when the priest eat it, when the priest take of that which is holy. Then the Lord commands the blessing. Now, I'm on third base, and I'll wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. I told you, Jesus said, you're all healed. Now go and, and show yourself to the priest and take him an offering. In, in Matthew chapter 9, uh, the Bible says in verse 35, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching there in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You all have heard me preach it before. Here Jesus was preaching, teaching, and healing all kind of diseases. But when he looked at the people, they were scattered and fainting because they didn't have a pastor, because they didn't have a supervising priest, because they didn't have somebody that would feed them with knowledge and understanding, because they didn't have, my God, a priest that could receive of the Lord's offering, amen to God, and speak of the Lord's blessing over them that could manage the people. So even though Jesus was healing, you still needed a supervising priest. And Jesus confirms and said, man, I'm healing them, I'm ministering, I'm, I'm, I'm delivering them, but they, they need a shepherd. They need a supervising priest. Somebody type it in, a supervising priest. An, another word, let me give you a revelation. Somebody need to go back and check this out. You need a chamberlain. You need a shepherd. You need a pastor. You need a bishop. You need a priest. You need a man or woman of God. You need somebody who you can honor the Lord with your tithe. I was talking to Bishop Blackwell. We got into some levels. Let me open up some things, and I'm going to let you go. Let me open up some things for you. I'm going to let you go. Lord, have mercy. Don't touch what is holy. Don't Touch what belongs to God. Give that to your supervising priest. And make sure they consume it. 
Because that's when the Lord receives it. When you honor your man and woman of God, that's when the Lord receives it. That there may be meat in my, bring the tithe so there can be meat. We need to have some meat in my house. Lord rebuked me a couple of weeks ago because I'm taking care of all of this business for the Lord's house and this went down. We ain't even been in the building and the, the, the air conditioning unit costing me $3,000 and you got to fix this and haven't even been in the building. We got to do this. We got to do that. All this stuff for the building. And the Lord says, oh, so you're going to take your money. You're going to take that which is holy, which I've given to you and take care of the building. And the Lord had to straighten me out. That's when I got on this track and started reading and studying and studying and reading. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He said, the, the best thing you can be is to God work for the people. The best thing you can do is consume what the Lord has given you. Make sure you're blessed so you can command the blessing of the Lord over the people. You don't give that which is holy to the dogs. You don't cast your pearls before swine. You make sure you consume what is yours. And that's relative to your supervising priest. But you got to understand that that's relative to you as well. Look at Jesus Christ in Matthew 26. He's there at Simon the leper's house. He used to be a leper. He ain't a leper no more. And here comes the woman with the alabaster box, a very costly ointment. And she offers it to Jesus. I'm talking about meat to eat that you know not of. And when everybody said, oh, man, we should have sold this perfume and given it to the poor. And she didn't pour it on Jesus. Jesus said, leave this woman alone. Y'all don't understand. I got to eat. Y'all don't understand the meat that's on my table. Y'all don't understand. You all have to let this woman bless me because she's anointing me for my burial. What she's doing is going to bless y'all. When somebody, why would you get an attitude when somebody sent me $10,000? Why would you get an attitude when somebody blessed me? Why would somebody, why would you get an attitude when somebody give me $500? They want to bless your supervising priest. This is going to bless you. When I'm blessed, you're blessed. When your leader is blessed, you're blessed. And this is not just for our church. This is for the kingdom of God. When you have a priest, when you have a leader, you make sure they're blessed. I understand why the world goes the way the world goes because they are wiser than the children of light. That's why they pay their superstar, basketball players, football players. That's why they do everything they can do for the president, whoever is in the White House, whether it's Obama, whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, amen, whether uh, whoever is next, they make sure that this is in place and that is in place and they got this and they're taking care of the rest of their life. There is a there's a governor's mansion in every major city in this nation. Why? Because they understood the anointed head. They understood how important it is that you bless your leader and bless your headship. Why? Because they have the power to speak the blessing. They have the power to command the blessing. Oh, I'm getting excited now. I'm getting excited. The priests represented the people to God and God to the people. Amen. When, when the offering was received, that was the people to God. But when the offering was consumed, that was God to the people. My God, my God, my God. Now, tighten your seatbelt up now. Let me give you just a little bit more and I'm going to let you go. Have you ever considered why Adam and Eve were commanded not to touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Now, you, you, you couldn't touch the firstborn. You couldn't touch the first fruit. You couldn't touch the first seed, the harvest, the first city, the thing that was holy, the thing that was dedicated unto the Lord. You couldn't touch it. It belonged to God. So when we go all the way back to Genesis now, here we have this garden that God has put the man in. He said, everything, you can have all of that, but this tree right here, that's mine. Don't touch that. Hey, I remember, what was the movie? Barbershop, you remember the barbershop movie, right? And there was one of the barbers that had some 
uh, lemonade had had something in the refrigerator said this is my lemonade she put her name on it said don't touch it she came back and she she's raising all kinds of sand because somebody touched what was hers have you ever had that experience where you have something in your house you say hey this is mine don't touch the last one this is man don't touch it you come back somebody and ate what you said was yours it it makes you feel a certain kind of way and it would really make you feel a certain kind of way if it's your house if you buy everything in the house if you pay for everything in the house if you take care of everybody in the house if you do and matter of fact if those in the house want some all they got to do is ask you for it but if you say in this house don't touch this this is mine now let's go back to genesis why was it such a sin when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit? And we often focus on the fact that they operated in disobedience, that they operated in a lack of faith. All of that is true. All that is right. Let me add to that. Could it be that they took what belonged to God? Could it be that they took what he had set apart for himself. Could it be they touched what was holy and off limits? Now, why do you say that, man of God? Because we have a pattern through all the scripture that there are things that God reserves for himself. And he says, don't touch it. Don't consume it. Don't eat of it. And they ate. And the penalty was they died. Don't that sound similar to what happened in, in, in Malachi 3 and 9? They were cursed with a curse. They were putting their money in bags with holes in it. Their, their, their fruit was casting forth. The, uh, the vine was casting the fruit before the time. I mean, the, the, the ground didn't bring forth. It wouldn't rain. Nothing would happen. They were cursed with a curse. It's a form of death. I always thought that was really harsh for eating for eating what was God's. Are you eating what belongs to God? Look at the words of Lucifer in, 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 in Genesis chapter 3. After they, uh, when the enemy is, is tempting Eve, he says, you, you will be as God's. You will be as God's. Another translation would suggest that the enemy was saying, if you eat of this tree, you're going to be like God. Let me amplify. If you eat of this tree, you're going to do what God does. If you eat of this tree, you're going to eat some God food. If you eat of this tree, you're going to do what God does. You're going to be like God. You're going to eat of that which is holy. And the problem was they weren't ordained. They, weren't, they hadn't been given access to eat of that which was holy. People of God, you haven't been given access to eat of that which is holy. Only his Levites, only his priests, only your supervising priest can eat of that, which is holy. But if you put meat in the house of God, Lord, I'm going over my time today. If you put he, if you put meat in the house of God, then the Lord says, "Let my priest eat, and they're going to command a blessing, and then prove me. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open." the windows of heaven. Uh, I really need another 25 minutes to deal with the windows of heaven. And so I'm gonna put that on, I'm gonna put that on layaway. I'm gonna put that on layaway to Wednesday. But y'all cannot miss Wednesday because I'm gonna tell you about the windows of heaven. I'm gonna take you back to Genesis and show you that it had not rained, never. It had never rained. And then the Lord opened the windows of heaven. What caused him to open those windows? My God.
My God, I, I oh Lord, I'm going to end up preaching the whole thing. I'm so excited here. The windows of heaven are going to be opened when you get meat in the house of God. I'm going to stop right there. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, let there be meat in your house. Bring all the tithe, people. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse. You've been healed. You've been touched by Christ. Go show yourself to the priest and bring the offering that Moses commanded. Those are the words of Jesus. We understand now that the meat, the offering, the tithe must be consumed by the Lord's priest. I understand why the Lord wants me blessed so I can bless. I understand. I get it. And I must walk worthy of the vocation wherewith I'm called. I must be wholly committed to the Lord because I don't get no possession. The Lord is my possession. I get that. Are you operating like Adam and Eve? Are you being put out of the garden? Is there death all around you? Because you are taking of that which belongs to God. Return. Return to the Lord. Be restored by bringing the tithe. And then the Lord's going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Make sure there's meat in the house of God. Come on, clap your hands for the word of the Lord. Wow. And there you have it, ABLM sons and daughters partners and viewers. I enjoyed the word of the Lord on tonight. I, I trust that you did too as well. And I just want to say to the ABLM sons and daughters, uh, those of you again that have been consistent with your giving, Lord have mercy Jesus. I, I trust that you ate that word, that that word really ministered to your heart like it did for me. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to my bishop and my pastor for, again, allowing us to set in and hear the word of the Lord as you did minister to our hearts on tonight. Let there be meat in mine house, saith the Lord. Meat in my house. ABLM, it is the time where, before we conclude, that we would do as we always do, and that is honor the Lord. And even after hearing a word like tonight, we're that much more uh, motivated, we're that much more encouraged, uh, not just to give because it's the right thing to give or to do, but we give certainly because the Lord has blessed us, but now we give with even a better understanding. I'm going to ask that all of the tithers would honor the Lord with your tithe, those of you that have a tithe. And that others, we would honor the Lord with the Midweek Connect offering. $20 customarily is what we ask for in the middle of the week. And so I'm going to ask that every, every member, every partner would do that. If you have watched for the first time on tonight, go to our website, ablm1.org, and learn more about us. And if you are so inclined, ma'am, sir, go ahead and sow your seed and know that when you sow, you are sowing into good ground. While you're doing that and the information does appear on the screen, I want to thank God again for all of you that came out in person, that could come, that did come on Sunday night. The Lord, he did bless us. He met us as the clarion call, the clarion sound has gone out. And those of you that were not able physically to be in the room, perhaps as we uh, uh, join in for the next three weeks, one hour in the sanctuary, that you would make your way, you would make your way. Palm Sunday is approaching us this Sunday, and we ask that you would join us, that you would join us, that you bring your family, come to the house of God, or even by way of stream, virtually, as we do have members that are out of state. In fact, again, on last week, officially, I was able to call and make contact with two new members. So ABLM, we are very proud and thankful to the Lord that he is still adding souls to this local assembly. We give God the glory. We give him the glory. Until Sunday, 
I believe that's it until Sunday. By God's grace, join us. Again, whether in person or across the stream, uh, we believe here at A Better Life Ministry that the key to life, it is a better life. Go in God's peace until next time.